Hello my fellow courtroom companions. In today's video I'm going to show and demonstrate to you how to take good notes in court. I'm going to share with you a template that I've created and it's included in the notes below that I think you will find very beneficial when you're going to court. When you're going to court there's so much going on and it moves so quickly a lot of the times. You know attorneys are talking to, to, are talking to each other, the judge is interjecting, um, the attorneys are objecting, you as a party in the case are thinking of things that you know you want to ask your attorney maybe you don't understand some of the stuff that's happening or you want to ask him a question or you want to think of you know things that you want to tell him later like hey be sure to ask me about X Y and Z and you need a really good system to be able to capture all of that in a way that will be meaningful to you when you're done with court um, when I was going through my court case I used the same system throughout and it wasn't very effective which is why I thought about it later like what could I, what could I have done differently and I used a legal pad and I would just scratch all kind of notes in the middle of the page I would use the margins to put questions that I wanted to ask my attorney or things I wanted to remind my attorney of on the other side in the margin I would say to myself, you know, be sure to pull this text or, or this email. And there's just so much going on when you're in court that you need a really super easy and super effective note-taking system. So I'm going to share one with you today that I think will be helpful. Um, I've included, again, the template in the notes section below. And so I'm going to show you now how to um, use that template. So here's the template. So there's a place for the title. I just put court notes, but you can call it whatever you'd like. You can put your case number or your, uh, you know, say it's Jones versus Jones. Whatever you like to put there is uh, completely up to you. There's a place for the date. And on the left-hand side, the column is used for significant notes and statements. The right-hand side is used for showing or telling your attorney things that you want to make sure you tell your attorney. And the bottom is just a to-do item. Uh, or it's just a to-do box. So let me show you the kinds of information you'll put in there. So on the left hand side, significant notes and statements, I put Jane, who's a witness, lied. She said initially that our daughter was able to spend the night at her house, but then later on in their testimony denied our daughter ever spending the night at her house with her daughter. So that's significant because Jane can't be trusted. She ha lacks credibility. So you'll want to make sure that uh, you um, capture that. Here's another example. Defendant lied. Um, the defendant stated that I rarely let our daughter speak to him when she is in my care. And so he's trying to show that you alienate him from your child. And that is extremely significant in a custody case. So you'll want to capture that lie. Here's another example. Doug, who's a witness, lied, said he never borrowed money or never asked to borrow money. And so you're, you'll want to point out all of those lies that are being stated by the other side and his witnesses. And so that's the kind of information that you capture there. The right-hand side are things that you want to tell your attorney. And so they could relate to the left-hand side, but they also could be unique. Here's an example. Show sleepover text messages. Remember, Jane lied about uh, the girls spending the night at her home or spending the night with each other at her home. Well, if you can show text messages where you've coordinated those um, overnights, then that's significant. You can show that she lacks credibility and probably most of what she says you should be taken with a grain of salt. Here's an another example. Show cell phone records. Perhaps something was said in court that you think that cell phone records would be helpful to prove um, a lie or something else and so you'll want to show those to your attorney. Another example is to show canceled checks. Perhaps you dug down here said you never loaned him money or never borrowed money. Well if you can show canceled checks where you wrote a check out to him then that would be significant to shoot his credibility. Um, so another example is for you want your attorney to ask you about why you weren't able to go to all of Charlie's soccer games, for example. You know, maybe the other side said that you never come to games and you don't support your child's interests. Well, 
if you can show that you had three jobs as a single parent um, because you've got legal bills, you know, that would put that into context why you didn't go to those games. And so you'll want your attorney to ask you about that. So that's something that you could put here. The bottom is just your to-do items. So here's a couple of examples. Study the email exchanges regarding the scheduling of medical appointments. Perhaps the other side said that you schedule medical appointments when you know that the other party can't attend. Well, if you can show emails that, um, or testify to emails that showed you made significant efforts to coordinate the, the schedule, well, study those because if your attorney asks you about those on the witness stand, then you'll know those inside and out. So it's just a note to study those particular emails. Here's another example. Let's say in court the judge asked the other side why he or she didn't think that the, the previous custody order was working and why he or she thought that that's why a modification of custody was needed. Well, you'll want to take note of that because the judge may ask you as well. So these are just little to-do items for yourself to keep in mind. So I wish I had this note system when I was uh, going through my court case, but I didn't think of it till later. So I hope that you will find this template helpful um, and you can modify it in the way that makes sense for you. So based on your individual court case, um, the information that you capture will obviously be unique um, to just your case. Uh, but one thing to note is that you don't have to capture everything that is being said in court. Most court systems, if not all, will have the ability for you to order a written transcript or have an audio file. In, in my court system, I was able to order a CD of each day, and it was about $25 per CD for a you know, six to eight hour day. Um, and so I found that very beneficial. I could go back and listen to everything that was said so that I could put my notes into context a lot of the times. But you don't want to have to rely, I guess, on the CDs for you to understand your notes. And so the template that I just shared with you, you can use um, uniquely to your case. So if you find that you have a lot of questions for your attorney, you can obviously widen that column. Um, it's a word template that I've provided below, so you can certainly widen the column or, you know, eliminate the one at the bottom. But I think this template can be used in a variety of ways. And what I would recommend is that you just make a gazillion copies of that template and put it in a binder. And it has, a, you know, obviously a place for the date, so you can kind of keep everything in order and in one place. Um, I wish I had done this for myself during my uh, court hearings, but. Um, you know, everything moved so fast that I didn't really have time to think about it. I just kept using the same system that worked. Well, it could have been more effective, but it, at least it worked for me. I had to spend a lot of time deciphering my notes, but I think if I had a template, template like the one I just showed you, I think it would have been much better. So I hope that you found this video helpful. Um, if you do, please give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe, and please let me know what other kind of content you'd like to see. Take care.